All right, this was sent into the channel for a review. I have not seen one of these before or a review of one, I don't think. Um, must be new. So this is a gotcha fix. Uh, oscilloscope multimeter. Um, it claims to be an 80 megahertz scope. So yeah, that's pretty good. And it's a dual trace, or at least it has two inputs. Uh, channel one, channel two. It also has a, a generator output. So it's got a function generator and output. And yeah, it's like a nice little two channel scope. So um, let's see here. It is pretty big. Uh, let me measure it here. It is 200 millimeters by 90 millimeters by 40 millimeters. And uh, it uh, has a, a built-in battery. It has two um, 18, what are they, 18650s, whatever they are. It's got two of those in there, so it's got quite a bit of uh, battery. Uh, so it's, it's obviously chargeable. It has a charging port on the side, USB-C. Um, and let's just turn it on, just to have it do something. Big on button, <laughs> you have to hold it down for a bit. Uh, innovate. Innovation never sleeps, something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, there we go. It's got the uh, fancy uh, graphics display, so they put in some some fancy numbers for the uh, um, for the display there. Uh, it tells you which, uh, depending on what mode you are, it tells, tells you which uh, which contacts you should be using. So for for voltage, you should be using these two uh, AC volts, Hertz. And duty cycle, okay, that's all off of these guys. Um, then there is this button, which is ohms, diode check, uh, up to three volts, I guess. Uh, the beeper, continuity check, and capacitor check. Um, all right. And then the last one, let's see, we haven't had this one yet. So this is amperage. So you, now you use the two terminals at the bottom for current. And it's got AC, DC milliamps, AC, DC amps, and then it's got one 10 amp uh, connector over on the side. And then the last one is waveform generator. So you can do square wave, ramps, signs. Yeah, so those are the ones. And then frequencies, it goes up to one megahertz, and then peak to peak voltage and duty cycle. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, there is some, you Utility. Oh, and then there's channel one gives you the scope thing channel two So one and two I've, I'm I, I'm not sure if they display at the same time or not. We'll have to try that out uh, utility Backlight power off options and stuff like that. There's trigger position uh, You can save waveforms and recall them. I don't think you can read them out of the out of the uh, USB connector though I think they stay in inside just a graphics capture. Um, and then there's an auto button for the oscilloscope type of thing. Uh, let's see, uh, turn it off, you hold down the button for a while and uh, turns itself off. Uh, in the kit, you get a manual, you get a big uh, quick user guide. You only get one probe, a uh, standard probe, you get a little soft case charging cord, uh, you get one set of BNC for the, either for the scope input or the uh, waveform output. And then you get some, uh, you get some probes. Uh, let's see what kind of probes they give you. I hate these things. Why do they put them on there? Why do they do that? They're not good for anything, <laughs> I guess keeps the shape or something. I don't know. Oh, get rid of those. And these look like the real pointy ones. Yeah. Oh, no, they're not the pointy ones. These are the generic, generic ones. So that's okay. I like those. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's turn it on and measure some things. Okay. So we're going to be measuring some volts. I'm going to be using my voltage standard right there. I've showed that in a video. Uh, and I have it set to one volt and that looks pretty close to one volt uh, two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's go to millivolts. Um, 100 millivolts, very nice. 90, pretty accurate on these. 80, 70, 60, you get the idea. 30, and 10, very nice. All right, let's set this to one millivolt. How are we doing? A little bit slow, but yeah, works, uh, works really, really well. So I'd say volts are just fine. Turn that off. Let's go to ohms. All right. And we've got uh, 10 ohms, which is correct. It is slow. Uh, yeah, it does creep up on it. So 100, let's put in 1K. Yeah, definitely slow. Ten K. It's accurate though. Hundred K, very nice. And let's see if it does big stuff. Yeah, ten meg ohms, perfect. Yeah, so it's really good. It's just slow. Um, and you either like or hate the display. Um, I don't mind it. Uh, let's see here. We've got the um, diode checker here. All right, let's do the diode check. We will do a uh, germanium, actually it's a Shockey, uh, 0.3. Here's a regular uh, silicon, 0.64. Here's an LED, 1.6, and here's a blue LED, uh, 2.5. So it will uh, will go up to three volts for uh, for diode checking. So that's nice. Let's check the continuity thing. See if it's latched. Yep, it's latched and yeah, it's pretty fast. So continuity is good. And a uh, capacitor. Here's a 10 microfarad. 11.9, okay, slow. Uh, let's try a 0.01. Yeah, 10 nanofarads, so that's working good. So I'd say diode checks okay. Um, current, let's check the output with itself. And we will hit the auto button, see if it can uh, automatically find it. Yeah, there it is, look at that, perfect. Looks like it's calibrated, very, very nice. And then the up buttons make it big, and the arrow buttons make it big. Yeah, well, it looks okay to me. Um, so if we go here and we say triangle wave, hey, we get a triangle wave. Look at that. Yeah, very nice. Um, a little bit trouble, a little bit of trouble with the triggering. This this isn't only an eight bit, uh, an eight bit. Um, oscilloscope, so you can't expect too much from it. Let's do a save. Save success. Okay. And let's do a sine wave. And we will do a save. Save success. Okay. Now, how do we get those things back? Let's say if we hit menu. Uh, does that do anything? No. If we hold down the save, no, that doesn't do anything. Push this bottom button here. It looks like it's a record button. That's kind of weird. All right, it says we hit the utility button. Wait a minute. No, we hit the menu button. Where's the menu button? Menu, uh, menu button's here. We'll hit the menu button and 
go down waveform. It says select data. I don't see data on here. Maybe maybe waveform. Ah, there they are. We have our two saved things. So let's say we want to look at that one. Hit enter, and there it comes up. So yeah, it does save it, and you can recall it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's see if we can do uh, a test on the speed of this thing. So let me get set up for that. All right, I have it hooked up to this function generator through the oscilloscope probe. So we'll hit, we'll hit auto on this, see if it can find it. So there we go, a nice sine wave here. This is 11 megahertz. Um, and let's see here, can we measure frequency on this? I guess it doesn't matter. There's, there's cursors and, and all that kind of stuff on here, but uh, I'll just make this big and then we can take a look at it. Okay, here's 11 and we'll go up 22 megahertz, 26 megahertz. Let's go up a range. Um, all right, here's 29. And now we're falling a bit, falling a bit right at 40. And uh, let's zoom out. Cause a lot of times you can see the, uh, an the aliasing, yeah. So you can sort of see the uh, undulation in the signal here when we get up to these high frequencies. Let's go back to, uh, yeah, a little bit at 29. Let's go back to 23, a little bit there too. Not too bad, not too bad. And then we get up to, up here at 35, it's starting to look a bit funny. Let's zoom out a bit. 47, okay, let's go up a range, no, oh, 94, it does not do 94. Okay, so here's 47. And yeah, now it's just not right. Yeah, it's getting a bit wonky, 60 megahertz. Let's go to their 80 megahertz published spec. And yeah, it's just wrong at 80. Um, so I call it a 40 megahertz scope. Uh, I think it would be fine at 40 megahertz. And uh, certainly, certainly below 20 megahertz, it's acting very well. So, I think that's a that's a pretty good scope for its uh, for its size and complexity. Um, I want to see if channel two is working. So let me see if I can find a another scope probe here. Let me go here to channel two. Like I said, it only came with one probe. I'll go here to channel two, so here's channel one, here's channel two. Ah, there it is, it's, it's dual trace, so very nice. Look at that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is this put on time, this is the times 10 only, I think. Yeah, this probe is times 10 only, so. Um, his clip lead on me, but that's the problem. Oh yeah, that's the problem, there we go. Yeah, they're not exactly the same, are they? Let's go here, let's go out to something slower. Oh, why are they giving me slightly different numbers here? Let's see, channel two, oops, channel two. 200 megahertz, 200 volts, 200 millivolts per, yeah, this is set to 200, and this is set to 200, and they're not reading the same. That's a bit strange. That's a bit strange. Yeah, this one's reading a little bit higher. And this one is low on that one, low on that one, yeah. So channel to channel, they're reading okay. The probe itself is reading a bit different. Might be might be calibration of the of the probe. Um, this the probe that I picked up wasn't meant for this particular scope. I just had it had it on hand. But what we did see is that it is a dual tray scope, and uh, that is very very good. All right. So impressions. Uh, it is a bit large. Uh, but then it does all kinds of stuff. 
Um, it has rechargeable batteries, which I really like. It is dual channel, which I really like. Um, it goes to 40 megahertz, definitely like that. Um, it reads ohms slow, and I think it reads volts slow. So as a voltmeter, you know, you can get better voltmeters, but as a combo pack, uh, I, think it's, I think it's just fine. And I really do enjoy the dual trace of this thing. Uh, most of the other small scopes that I've uh, reviewed uh, are single, single channel only, so having dual channel is, is really nice. I wish it had a way of reading the data out the USB. Maybe they can add that in the future. Um, yeah, uh, has the built-in generator. So I mean, it's kind of like a little, you know, little lab, little lab in one package, right? So if you, if you just want to goof around, or you want to go to your friend's house and he doesn't have this stuff, you can bring this over. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think it has a place in the place in the shop. Okay, that was my review of the GotchaFix uh, 80 megahertz uh, oscilloscope tested to 40 megahertz. Um, there's a link down below. I don't know what the model number of this thing is, but if you go down below, I think they sell two models, a 12 megahertz uh, portable scope and this 80 megahertz portable scope if you search for that. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go.